Moving on to our next story today, tweaks to the ministerial code have been announced over the weekend that allow minor rule breaking without the expectation that ministers should resign or indeed face the sack. At the same time, the independent adviser on ministers' interests will now be able to launch investigations without those investigations having to be instigated by others. All of these changes come at an awkward time for the Prime Minister, who himself has been accused, albeit not proven, of breaching the ministerial code, accused, of course, of misleading Parliament about lockdown gatherings in Downing Street. Now, of course, misleading Parliament will not be considered to be a minor breach. It would still be a major one and one that ministers would have to resign for. Ministers, of course, would still be expected to resign in that case. Yet all of this reform to the code comes at a very awkward time for the Prime Minister as pressure is mounting on him over his personal behaviour. Well, joining me now to talk through exactly what's going on with the Ministerial Code and hopefully explain what on earth the Ministerial Code is, is Christian Wakeford, Labour MP for Bury South and of course many will remember formerly a Conservative MP for that seat. Welcome to the programme, Christian. Good to have you this morning. Um, I suppose your reaction, first of all, to these tweaks to the ministerial code. Um, Surely this is something that was expected to come about at some point this year. There had been a review that was going on for some time. I I think there's there's a difference between a recommendation um, and uh, a fundamental change. But how do you define a, a serious rule break? I mean, we've got a criminal prime minister who's actually been proven to have broken the law. We've had a home secretary who's been accused of bullying her own staff. We've had uh, certainly uh, senior ministers also under investigation at the moment. So what rule do you have to break for it to be deemed serious? Uh, so it's it's very uh, kind of circumstantial timing uh, where it looks like the, uh, the prime minister is basically trying to take his bat and ball home because he doesn't like the rules he's currently playing to. You know, if anything, uh, he's showing that he's not only a threat to democracy, but a threat to the rule of law itself. If he's, got, you know, if he's going to try and show that rules can be broken, laws can be broken with no real uh, kind of recompense and, uh, and punishment, then then why should anyone else follow the law uh, that his government is is trying to force on everyone? It's absolutely wrong. The timing is even worse, uh, but he really should be going back to the drawing board and, and rethinking this. And yet it wasn't his proposal, of course. This is something that's come from the Committee on Standards in Public Life, who published uh, a report uh, very, very recently in November 2021. Um, And I think we can have a little look at some of that, what was in this report from the Committee uh, on Standards in Public Life. Uh, 311 of this report talks about how uh, compliance may be undermined by conflating major rule cases, uh, major rule breaches with minor ones, saying to those outside government, a relatively minor breach of the process can be misunderstood as a serious breach of ethical standards. Now, that's come from the Committee on Standards in Public Life. Uh, do they have a point in terms of their recommendation to make that differentiation between a major breach and a minor breach? Well, I, I think the difference here is who, who is the one who justifies what is minor and what is serious. Again, it's it's the Prime Minister because the ultimate arbiter of a ministerial code is the Prime Minister. So if he decides that actually it's uh, it's just a Westminster bubble type issue or, or, or it's not serious in his eye, and you know, this is, again, a Prime Minister who has been guilty of breaking the law, then you know, there, there isn't going to be any punishment. There isn't going to be um, any justice soon. There isn't going to be any punishment. Uh, so whilst it, I think it's okay to try to justify the difference between minor and serious, you know, the, the ultimate arbiter is someone who, who clearly can't tell the difference himself. There could be room, scope for this sort of uh, reform, of course, because it was uh, proposed independently Might there be some sort of uh, accordance that could be made here that does accept that some sort of that there are some things that would be a minor breach of the rules that might not be the most resignation worthy affair? And there may be other things that are clearly uh, much more resignation worthy. Might might a more independent process attached to to this rule change be something that could win over Labour's support? Well, I, I think an independent, and by independent, I mean truly independent, 
Um, and you know, we've seen certainly comments this weekend about the true independence of the Sue Gray report when Number 10 have supposedly tried to call her in and, and try to uh, put the weight on and, and try to say, can you take some of the names out and, and water it down slightly? Uh, independence will go a long way, but again, if it can be overruled, then it's not worth the paper it's written on. You know, it truly does need to be taken away from a prime minister's, uh, prime minister's site, his power, his power of veto. Uh, because it, you know, if it's completely down to him, then but there isn't going to be any justice. We, we've seen honourable people in the past who resigned over, you know, inadvertently misleading the House. Um, you know, I, I think of a late James Brokercher who resigned as a minister uh, when it turned out that his cleaner didn't have the right immigration papers. He didn't need to because he didn't know about that, but he thought it was the honourable thing to do. Now, we now have a culture in Number 10 and in government where actually, you know, whether it's a minor break or a serious break, there is no punishment. There is no justification. It can be overruled. Even senior civil servants can get away with breaking the law or instigating these law-breaking parties. It's just not worth the paper it's written on under Boris Johnson's power. Now, you spoke about those uh, alleged leanings on, those meetings between some of the Prime Minister's office um, and, and some of Sue Gray's team. Now, no, none of that was to change anything about the Prime Minister, but there was allegedly the argument that uh, civil servants' names should not be included in that report. Do, do you think that that was improper? Should, should more civil servants' names have appeared in that report? I think yeah, any untoward pressure that was put on Sue Gray it was highly inappropriate and, and certainly tries to erode the notion that the, the report itself was independent. If it was, they, they wouldn't have been trying to make any amendments to it. Uh, so it does raise quite a few questions. There are further questions about parties that supposedly haven't been investigation, um, investigated, either by the Met or uh, by, by Sue Gray herself, which suggests, again, that Number 10 isn't truly forthcoming with a lot of this information. It, it does reek that uh, of a, a lot of uh, attempts of cover-up, really. A bit worrying if we try and pursue a trial by media of these politicians. Of course, the Met Police spent months investigating that whole affair, and the acting head of the Met Police said just last week that there was no evidence that the Prime Minister himself was a serial rule breaker, although that's not to say that other uh, individuals within Downing Street did not behave um, as, as properly as they might have done. Uh, is the problem here to some extent that all of these issues get conflated in the minds of the media, all these different stories bubble together, and then uh, there's an impression that one individual is a serial rule breaker when a pretty rigorous in investigation finds that not to be the case? Well, I, I think a lot of people would, would disagree with that, Tom. Yeah, you know, when we're hearing that, you know, it can only be investigated so far because uh, senior officials weren't actually responding to the questionnaires. Again, that raises further questions. Uh, but when we know there have been law-breaking parties, the prime minister himself was there and raising a glass uh, and partaking in the party. Of that, um, and we're, we're seeing a couple of the the pictures now. Um, but when we're having you know shots on some of the tables, then that clearly suggests that actually that it was much more than serial offenders of one or two people. It was a fundamental culture um, that that was going through the heart of Number Ten, the heart of government, and the heart of democracy. You now my constituents are furious about it. There are many people throughout the country who are absolutely furious about it. The one rule for them and one rule for us notion. And it absolutely needs to change. And that can only change with Boris Johnson leaving. Now, Christian, um, I'm afraid we are running to the end of this conversation. But just before I let you go, I have to ask you a question on one uh, issue that is not exactly the most major issue in the world, but is something that will make some people a little bit happier. Weights and measures. Should people be able to buy a pint of something other than beer or milk without it having also to be advertised in, in, uh, in litres? Well, I, I'm more than happy to stay uh, ordering a pint of beer. And uh, the next time I see you in Strangers, Tom, I'm, I'm sure I'll offer you one as well. <laughs> well, that's a very kind offer, uh, one which I will take you up upon. Christian Wakeford, thank you so much for joining us on the briefing this morning. Really appreciate your time. Well, now let's talk about Boris Johnson's position in a greater sense of detail. He's facing, of course, more pressure over that Partygate scandal. Reports suggest that officials had attempted to dilute Sue Gray's report, albeit over civil servants rather than elected politicians.